Hi, I'm Tom Jones and welcome again to another free art lesson. I'm going to show you how to put in color uh, on your painting and then how to lift out to create interesting objects. You lift the color out using water. I'm going to show you how to do that rather than tell you up front. I've got a wall here in the foreground. I've got a wall in the distance with a window and some trees. We're going to paint this area very dark back here and then we're going to dry and lift out that color. But let me go ahead and put the foreground wall in first. So let me get over here and get some warm colors. I'll start with some sienna colors. I'll start with some uh, of my yellow ochre. We'll keep this nice and rich and juicy. And if it runs, the color runs up in here, so be it. It's going to be covered up with darker color back there anyway. So let's go ahead and just put in some interesting color for this wall. I'll use a little burnt sienna. I'm using a little yellow ochre. I'll use a little bit of my permanent red light, which is a nice interesting red. So we'll put a little bit of that color in there as well. Once I've got this color down, I can dry this, do the background area with a darker color, and voila, you'll see all of a sudden, you'll see the window, you'll see the uh, trees back here, and so forth. That's all I want to do with that color. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and dry that, and I'm going to put in the darks behind it. Now the reason I put this color down very loosely like this, leaving some of the white area, if I want a textured wall here, then I can come back and put another little glaze of color over this and it'll look very interesting as a, as a, uh, as a stucco wall. So that's why I put those colors down very roughly and loosely like that. And I changed colors a little bit. I've got some red, I got some sienna, and I got some yellow ochre in there to add more interest as a variety of color. That's not what the lesson plan's about, but as long as we're doing it, I might as well tell you about that. I'm gonna come up behind the wall now and I'm going to add some darks into the wall that's back here. And I'm going to color right over or paint right over. I'm going to paint right over these trees here. And I'm going to show you that you can just come in and lift those colors out. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my, uh, uh, my Prussian blue and we'll put some of that color in. We want to make this very interesting. An interesting variety of color is important. I'll take some more blue. I got some ultramarine blue deep in this case and a little bit of quinacridone rose. And we'll add that into the mix to give us a little more interest as well. Back to some hooker green. Back to some Prussian blue. And we'll put in some rich darks again. Coming right along the top of that wall. See how simple that was? We're going to cover this up. I'll come back in and show you how we'll rediscover it. And then we'll lift out some color for trees, etc. You'll have an interesting painting for it. For uh, you. Let's take and add a little bit more quinacridone rose in here to make it a little more interesting. We'll take and add some more blue in, some Prussian blue. Interesting color, that's what we're looking for at this point. Even though the lesson plan is on lifting out color, we want to make it interesting as well. Take a little more of the quinacridone rose, add that in. See how easy and quick that was? Now we dry this and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to resketch the window and I'll show you how to lift out color and finish off the foreground and we'll have a little exercise on how to lift color to create objects. We're going to lift color to create the window and the trees. Now, you have to make sure that this is completely dry. We're going to be coming in here, in here with water and lifting out some color. If it's not completely dry, it'll smudge and tear the paper. You won't have a nice crisp edge to the lifting that we're going to do. I got lucky here. I can actually see the sketch through this particular painting here. So I'm going to come in with my just water on my brush. I'm going to grab a towel, a little hand towel, and watch what I do. Just water on my brush. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to just lift out some color. I pat the area first to pick up excess color, then pick a dry part of the towel and just lift out the color. And there's a tree branch already, or a tree trunk. Same thing, just pat the area and lift out the color for some tree limbs. Don't get too carried away with too many tree limbs, but do have a few in there. All right, same thing, we're gonna lift out the color Come in and 
just put in another one next to the one we already have, the, the, tree, the tree trunk, I mean. Lift out that color. A couple of trees in the area. We'll do the window next. I'll put some color back in here just to kind of make it interesting for you. I've got the, um, the window, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to lift out this particular window. Same thing, pat to get rid of the excess color, then come in and lift. Don't go in and try to do the entire window at one time, you just do parts of it because the color, the water will dry before you get to the balance of it. All right, I'm going to take and turn this sideways and take out some more color. And again, we'll put some color back into this area of the window just to create some interest as well. Just water on the brush. You may not be able to see it right now, but it's just water on my brush. Pat up the excess color again. And then lift out. I'll turn it sideways again, do the bottom side. Pat that area. Dry part of the towel, lift out some more color. Now I've got some panes in here, so let me come down and lift out some color for them. There's one there, I'll turn it sideways again. Pat the color, lift out, another one here. Pat the color, lift it, let me make the one down the center a little wider still. And that's how that's done. Now let me show you where we go from here. Let's take a little bit of our color and add a little interest back into our tree area over here. Let's have a little fun with it. I took a little yellow. We'll just add a little color back into it just for a little fun. See that? If it's too much, pat it, get rid of some of the excess. It makes it jump out. Same thing here with this one. We'll just put a little yellow on there just to add some interest. You can have all kinds of fun with this. Let's take a look at our window. Let's come in here and pick up our Prussian blue, a little quinacridone rose. We'll come inside the window. Come inside the window and we'll do a little bit of a abstract shape inside the window to give the illusion that there is in fact a window here. See how easy that was? We'll do it again for this window pane here. Rather put an abstract shape inside the window to give the illusion of a reflection than to paint the entire rectangle area solid. Every one of the shapes is different. See, now the window is starting to pop. A little more down here. Now we'll come back in, we'll add just a little bit of color if we want. We'll take a little red, add maybe a little red to the edge of the of the window. This is an old beat up window. Don't paint a perfect window now, paint an interesting window. Maybe a little bit more red to that area. Down here we might take and put a little green in it. Let's have a little fun with some green. Make this an old beat up window like you'd see in Savannah, Georgia or, or somewhere in maybe uh, St. Augustine, Florida or something like that. Lots of coats of paint on it. Kind of rustic. Got the idea? Let's take on this side over here, we'll take some of our dark and we'll put a, a little shadow effect over here on this side. 
Now you can see the edge, it's even stronger. Do the same thing underneath, little shadow effect. We can take even one side of our tree over here and add a little darker side if you want to the tree. Have a little fun with that. See how easy that is and how much fun it is? You can lift out color. You can do an entire building this way. I just did the window and the trees. Have a lot of fun with that. Let's do one other thing. I promised you I would do this. Let's take a moment while I'm at it and let's just take and put a nice light uh, glaze of color, just a light glaze of some ochre over some of this white area and tone it down. And it'll give you an illusion of a very textured wall. Leave some of the white, but see how you got an interesting textured wall? Let me dry this for you and I'll do one extra thing and then we'll be finished. Now, a couple of extra things. You notice all these little white spots here. I'm going to take some cerulean blue, and I'll just touch those spots and tone them down. A little cerulean blue on my brush. You'll still see the texture in the wall, but it won't be so bright with that white. So you tone that down just a little bit. Uh, something I'll do over here for you as well. Watch this. We'll put some abstract shapes over here just for fun. Just water on my brush could be, you know, shadows, it could be a lot of different things, but we'll put a little bit of a area over here where we've lift that out some color too. Could be a lot of things, you know, it could be shadows, could be anything. One other thing, we'll put a little lip underneath of our wall here, our forward wall. to give it a little more character. Just that simple. See, all we did was painted some darks in here. We decided we'll lift out a little color with some water on our brush. You can have a lot of fun with this. I'm glad you joined me. Thanks, I'm Tom Jones.